He's got a little bit of it a has, part on. What do you <laughs> Released in the U.S. in November 2004, the Nintendo DS has been around for almost seven years and has left its mark on the gaming community. It was incredibly inventive, incredibly popular, and had a fantastic library of games. Every genre is covered. RPGs, platformer shooters, sports, adventure, puzzle, racing games, every type of game you can imagine has been on the DS, and many of them have been pretty damn good. Uh, granted, there has been a lot of crappy shovelware, but there's also been a lot of really good games as well. This year, the successor of the Nintendo DS, the Nintendo 3DS, which I can't show you because I do not own one yet, bummer, uh, it was released to markets, and the DS is soon to go into retirement. We wait for you, old friend. We wait for you. So, we here at Adam and Ditto are taking a look back at some of our personal favorite Nintendo DS games. Get ready for a whole lot of nostalgia. I'm Matt, and this is my personal top 10 favorite Nintendo DS games. Number 10. Number 10 on my list is Retro Game Challenge. Now, originally, this game was not in my top 10. In fact, I didn't even play this game until this year. But after putting a lot of thought into it, I decided I really did enjoy this game a lot. So it totally deserves my number 10 spot. Retro Game Challenge, for those of you who don't know, is a compilation of entirely made-up games all styled after NES games. You've got some space shooters, puzzle games, a racing game, and even a full-blown RPG akin to the Dragon Quest series. The games are all unique and fun in their own right, but what really makes this game great is the atmosphere. The whole idea is that you and your buddy are playing some games in the 80s and just having a blast. You get magazines every month that give you codes and previews of upcoming games, your buddy taunts you about how much you're, you suck, and your mom comes in and tells you to stop playing video games. Yeah, it's just like being a gamer, right? The developers really knew how it feels to be a kid playing games, and it really does add a lot to the game's charm. But that isn't to say Hagelman doesn't add to it either. Seriously, Hagelman 3 might just be a ripoff of Ninja Gaiden, but it is awesome. So thanks, Ricky, for introducing me to this awesome game and my 10th favorite DS game. Number 9! Number 9 is Sonic Colors. It might seem odd to put any modern day Sonic game in a top 10 best list these days, but the Sonic games on the DS are actually pretty damn good. Except for Sonic Chronicles. That game's horseshit. But the rest are pretty fun. I had to pick between Sonic Rush and Sonic Colors, but I decided I liked Colors a little bit better. Taking a tip from the classic 16-bit Sonic games, Colors on the DS isn't like the console version, which is a cross between side-scroller and platformer. But this game is an all side-scrolling and all speed. Well, and collecting whips to pass obstacles. That really does add a lot to the game. Turning into a rocket to blast through platforms or bouncing off walls like a laser is a lot of fun and really makes this game stand out over Rush, in my opinion. Also, this game has cameos from pretty much every major Sonic character currently in the franchise, so that's kind of awesome too. Unless you hate Big the Cat, in which case you won't like this game. Sorry. It also gets pretty tough towards the end, but it's not unbeatable. The only reason this game isn't higher on my list is actually because it's pretty short. I beat it in like a week. But regardless, if you like old school platforming on a new school handheld, give Sonic Colors a try. Number 8 Number 8 on my list is Super Scribblenauts. When the first Scribblenauts was announced, all of us here at Adam and Ditto were pretty excited by the premise. The ability to write any word and have it be used in gameplay was pretty awesome. In theory. Too bad when we finally got the game, it was plagued by terrible controls and some pretty hard puzzles. 
It wasn't a horrible game, but it just wasn't great. It seemed like an experiment to me, to see if people would actually want to play a game like this, you know. Well, I was totally right, as the very next year Super Scribblenauts was released and totally wiped the floor with Scribblenauts. It was everything the first game wanted to be. The controls were better, the puzzles were more fun, and the addition of adjectives really let your imagination run wild. Why drive to the Starite in a car when you can drive to it in a pregnant pink polka dotted car with a mohawk? I rest my case. I could spend hours just on the start screen coming up with all kinds of crazy combinations. Did you know bacon is an adjective? Neither did I. Either way, Super Scribblenauts really did manage to do the word super proud and should be in any DS owner's library of games, especially if you're a fan of nude writable women. Number seven. Number seven on my list is Yoshi's Island DS. Now, if you know me, you know I think Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is the very best game on the Super Nintendo. I know many of you will argue with me about that, but I don't particularly care. Yoshi's Island is a masterpiece of gaming, so when they released a sequel for the DS, naturally, I was hyped. And it turned out to be pretty damn good. The game feels just like the first one does, as Yoshi and Baby Mario travel through Yoshi's Island to save Baby Luigi and a bunch of other babies nobody cares about. You're saving them from Bowser and Baby Bowser, which is pretty weird, but whatever. The addition of being able to team up with Baby Peach, DK, Wario, and even Baby Bowser, spoilers, really does give the game a lot of fun variation. Using Peach's umbrella to get an extra boost is uh, very useful, and Baby Bowser's fireballs made killing poor Shy Guys much more fun. The game did have one pretty big drawback though. It got too hard, too fast. Now, Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo got really hard, but it was gradual. Yoshi's Island DS, well, it goes from breezy to insane in a matter of one world. But even with the added difficulty, it didn't stop this game from being a worthy successor to the masterpiece that was Yoshi's Island. And that's why it's my pick for the 7th best DS game. Number 6. Is it that I'm not supposed to exist? My number six pick is Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, or 358 days over two, I don't know how the hell you pronounce it, but either way, terrible name aside, Kingdom Hearts 358 days is an excellent entry in the Kingdom Hearts series and one of the best on the DS. While at first I wasn't too thrilled about playing a game about the organization and Roxas, the game did really get me to like a lot of these characters and turned out to be a whole lot of fun. It played just like the other games, only this time you were Roxas, teaming up with other members of the organization like the ever popular Zigbar and my favorite, Dimmix. Uh, the game is set up in a bunch of missions where you go from world to world training and doing stuff for the organization, like gathering information about the world or beating some sort of horrible heartless boss, all while collecting hearts so that the organization may one day complete Kingdom Hearts and live again. Yes, that's all very confusing, but the game is awesome. Even if there are one too many bosses I got stuck on for months at a time. The story is interesting, the controls work well, and the graphics are pretty good for the DS. It may not be as good as Birth by Sleep on the PSP, but it's definitely the best handheld Kingdom Hearts game on the DS. If you haven't already checked it out, you might just be surprised how much you enjoy it. But again, I am a huge King Kingdom Hearts fan, so maybe I'm a little biased. Also, I just want to point something out here. The Kingdom Hearts series is totally messed up, okay? You have to have, like, seven different consoles to enjoy the entire series. Okay, that, that, that's it. Move, move. Right. You have poured so many memories into me, given me so much, that I feel like I'm about to overflow. Look at me, Roxas. Who do you see? Number five! My number five pick is Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. 
This game just came out this year, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the very best games on the Nintendo DS. While you might have missed it because of all the hype for the 3DS, you really should go get this game right this second. I mean it, right this second. Go ahead, I'll wait. Did you get it? Good. Written and developed by Shu Takumi, the man responsible for Adam and Ditto favorite, the Phoenix Wright series, Ghost Trick tells the story of Cecil, a recently murdered ghost on a quest to find out why he died tonight before it hits daylight and he disappears forever. Using a series of ghost tricks, which basically means possessing objects and manipulating them to do stuff, kind of like Geist for the GameCube, only you might actually play this one. Uh, Cecil must work his way around the city and help a girl named Lynn save her own life and maybe answer some of his questions. It's a wild ride with a lot of twists and turns, but it's definitely one hell of a story. You can tell it was by Mr. Takumi because it has some incredibly well-developed characters, but it is a little short on gameplay. While the puzzles are certainly clever and fun, and some will drive you insane, once you know how they're done, there's really no reason to go back. But for me, this game isn't about the gameplay, it's about the story, and this game definitely has a great story with a surprise ending I won't spoil. But like I said, it also has some wonderful characters. Cecil, Lynn, and a doggy named Missile will stick with you, and hopefully uh, with me as well, for the rest of your gaming career. Oh, and it has some of the best looking graphics I've ever seen. The sprites are amazingly fluent and very pretty to look at. If you don't consider video games art, play this game. You will definitely change your mind. A fantastic game by a fantastic developer for a fantastic hand held on its deathbed. Ghost Trick is one swan song you shouldn't overlook any further. Number 4! My number four pick is New Super Mario Brothers. Every Nintendo console needs a definitive Mario game, and normally we get them at launch. But with the DS, it didn't come until a year later. A year and a half later, to be specific, but who cares. Uh, sure, the Nintendo DS had Super Mario 64 DS at launch, which is a great remake, but it was just that, a remake. But in May 2006, Nintendo released New Super Mario Bros., the brand new side-scrolling Mario game for the Nintendo DS. And it kicked ass! Going back to Mario's side-scrolling roots for the first time in a long time was such a great move on Nintendo's part. Even though the 3D Mario games are just as good, everybody knows how to play side-scrolling Mario games. I mean, the NES was founded on it. New Super Mario Bros. took everything that was great about those games and made it new again, adding in new items and new moves Mario hadn't been able to do yet in a side-scroller. He can ground pound, triple jump, wall jump. It definitely added a lot of gameplay and made the game a pure blast. The levels were all classic Mario. There's grass levels, ice levels, desert levels, jungle levels, uh, plenty of castles to go through. All we're really missing is a giant level. It's the definitive DS title that everyone has. Really, it's still one of the best-selling games of all time, and it's always in, like, Amazon's top ten or whatever. But anyway, because it's something that both hardcore and casual gamers can enjoy. The only problem is it's pretty easy to beat and doesn't have that great a multiplayer. Something fixed immensely by New Super Mario Bros. Wii, the sequel that's even better than the original. But just because the sequel is better doesn't mean this one wasn't just as good. So that's why this is number four on my top ten DS game. Number three! Number three on my list is Elite Beat Agents. Hey, want to know what the best DS game you didn't play was? Elite Beat Agents. One of the best music and rhythm games of all time, an Americanized version of the Japanese 
Uindon, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but let's assume I am, series, the Elite Beat agents followed the tale of three government agents who helped people with their problems by singing and dancing to them. Yeah, that's the plot. In Japan, the Uindon were cheerleaders, so I guess Nintendo thought Americans would buy government agents who sing and dance over cheerleaders? I'm not entirely sure what their logic was there, but anyway, they sing and dance to a number of pop songs from over the decades and help people with their crazy problems, like babysitting bratty children or predicting the weather right. It's a crazy game, to say the least, but it's a lot of fun. The game is played on the bottom screen. You tap these little numbered circles to the rhythm of the song at the right time. If you do it too early, you mess up. Mess up too many times and you'll fail the section of the song. Fail too many sections and you lose. It's not the most complicated game of all time, but trust me, it gets hard, especially in the harder difficulty. Songs like Jumpin' Jack Flash and Canned Heat will drive you insane. The game didn't do too well in American uh, stores, and you could find it in most places for less than $10. I got mine brand new for $8, and let me tell you, I would have gladly paid full price for this game. Despite the fact that it didn't do well in the US, it was imported a lot in Japan, and Nintendo actually made a sequel to Uendon because of the demand for Elite Beat Agents. It's a pretty silly story, and if that wasn't enough, some developers even made rip-offs of the game like Looney Tunes, Cartoon Conductor, and the DS version of Michael Jackson The Experiment. The Experience, not The Experiment, excuse me. I'm not gonna edit that out. Both used the same basic gameplay style, but couldn't quite capture the awesomeness and the intensity that was Elite Beat Agents. Definitely pick it up somewhere. I know GameStop has it for about $4 used, and you can probably find it on the cheap online somewhere. I hope they make a sequel someday, but it doesn't seem likely. Either way, I love the Elite Beat Agents. It's a gas, gas, gas. Number two. Number two on my list is Mario Kart DS. So my favorite game series pretty much of ever is Mario Kart. It's pretty much entirely Mario Kart 64's fault that I love Nintendo like I do. So, naturally, when a DS version of my favorite series was announced, I got really excited. However, I was not without hesitation. The last handheld Mario Kart title, Mario Kart Super Circuit, was less than stellar. I was a little worried. But man, I should have never been worried because Mario Kart DS was not only better than Super Circuit, but better than every Mario Kart title since and yet. It went back to the basics just a single cart style and eight playable characters, ditching the two per cart style that uh, Double Dash started. But, you know, that's how it should be. Double Dash is a fantastic game, and I'd love for two people carts to be an option again, but single carts is what Mario Kart does best. The game plays the same as any good Mario Kart. Race against seven other people, all while throwing items in, hoping to not get hit by a blue shell. It's classic. But what makes this game the best is all the little things they did. It has some of the best tracks in the entire series. Waluigi Pinball, TikTok Clock, Airshot Fortress, I could go on and on. It even has 32 tracks because it features 16 classic tracks from past games. Way to go the extra mile, Nintendo. It has 12 playable characters, including the awesome Rob cameo, and 3 carts per character, all of which can, can be used by any character, something I hope comes back in future games. But, obviously, the best part and the reason that I put it on this list so high is that it included online play. For the first time in Mario Kart, I could play with my friends from other states. Ricky, Don, Kyle, Josh, Jess, all of them. I can now play my favorite series in the world with my favorite people in the world, and it was awesome. Looking back at it, 
the online options are pretty lame. It takes forever to find anybody, and there's only so many tracks you can race on. Other games of a similar nature, like Diddy Kong Racing DS and even Mario Kart Wii, have done it much better since. But the fact that I can play with Ricky and all of them is a testament to just how awesome this game was. In fact, to this day, we still pick it up and play from time to time. Heck, I can play it by myself on my lunch break whenever I want. It's an amazing entry in the franchise and an amazing DS game nobody should be without. Number one! And my number one pick for best DS game is Pokemon Soul Silver. Let's face it, you knew this would be number one. I mean, we basically started this channel to show off Pokemon videos. Soul Silver is above and beyond the best Pokemon game and the best DS game. It pretty much had no choice but to be the best Pokemon me game. I mean, it was a remake of the best classic game. But it was so much more than a remake. There was so much to do in Soul Silver that you barely even knew it was the same game. New Pokemon to catch, new areas to explore, new places to battle, and of course, Wi-Fi battles. Pokemon Soul Silver is the ultimate Pokemon experience and the best game on the DS. It is so much fun to go online and battle with my friends after all the hard work I put into my Pokemon. It's a total drag I can't do it in black and white. Nintendo really should have stuck with what they made in this game. But regardless, I will likely never play a Pokemon game better than Soul Silver. I mean, I already put like 400 hours into it. It was the first game I actually got into EV training, and it got me to care about a lot of Pokemon I didn't care about before. Hell, I bought Battle Revolution for the Wii just so I could use all the Pokemon I made in this game even when my friends didn't want to battle. That's just how much I got into this game. The Pokemon series is so much more replayable than any other RPG out there, I mean, there's just so much to do after you beat the game, and it really hits the nail on the head. And, uh, it's, it's really, the series is really good for both hardcore and casual gamers. It can be as deep as you want it to be. And to me, that makes the Pokemon series, and Soul Silver in particular, uh, the perfect game. Skip Black and White, skip Diamond and Pearl, buy Soul Silver or Heart Gold, because it really is the very best Nintendo DS game. Now, I know there are tons of DS games I left off and could have easily made this list, but, uh, you know, can't fit them all on there. Animal Crossing, Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, Starfy, Phoenix Wright, WarioWare, all titles I contemplated putting up here. The DS has such an amazing library, and it's almost impossible to create a solid list. In fact, after I play through my back catalog of games, I'm sure this list will change once again. And even though the 3DS is now in stores, the DS isn't quite dead yet. I haven't picked up Okami Din or Monster Tail yet, and the new Thor game has gotten some pretty good reviews. Nintendo even still has a Kirby game in development, so there still looks to be some fight left in the little DS. The best of its years are not behind it yet, but we here at Adamant Ditto sure wanted to salute it. So thanks to everything you've done for us, the DS. We will never forget you. We will never stop playing you, and I greatly look forward to what your new brother, the 3DS, has in store. Thank you, and good night.